All right, I've got to get to work. I've got students, most of my kids, like, first day of school uh, today, so we'll try to make the tech news video fast, but there was some big announcements that I shouldn't uh, skip talking about. Uh, so basically, on September 27th, you're going to be able to get a Ryzen 7000 CPU. We have the official pricing, uh, which I have a lot of thoughts about. Uh, more, more on that in just a second. Um, and then the nice thing is it does look like AMD was actually saying sandbagging or whatever you want to call it um, from their initial uh, reveal of this stuff where the IPC uplift is actually closer to 13% combined with a large frequency gain showing up to 29% uh, single thread performance gains. Although keep in mind this marketing speak up to, right? The average, the real world uplift overall is going to be, you know, not 29%. So we do need to keep that in mind. Although they're showing um, excellent generation, you know, showing the 5950X against the 7950X. Um, they're showing, you know, significant gains. This does look really good. And they're trying to show that the uh, 7600X will be a great value for gaming, uh, showing it up against Intel's 12900K current gen flagship. Although remember the 13th generation is just around the corner. And I do have some news about that as well. More on that in a second. Um, but they're showing at least in these these games that the 7600X is at, uh, at you know 5% faster. It's not mind-blowingly better, but again that is against the 12900K flagship. Uh, we'll see how it competes against the 13th gen. And then um, again in energy efficiency, productivity and all of that, major performance gains. A lot of other um, you know, YouTube channels, the big guys have already covered a lot of these details. So what I wanna give you guys is some of my ah, thoughts on the actual pricing, is the value worth it? Um, and then get into some other news like we do have um, so a little bit of GPU news, things like that. Anyway, um, so it is nice to see the like 7950X being $100 less than the launch price of the 5950X, although this is currently more expensive than the 5950X's current pricing. Um, again, 7900X kind of matching the price that the 5900X came out at. Um, the 7700X is priced below where a 5800X came out with the 5000 series launch and below the current pricing of a 5800X 3D. So I'm actually very curious how the um, X3D 5800 uh, gaming performance is versus this uh, 7000 series. The fact to me that the 7700X is coming in below that pricing wise. Um, is that indicative at all of what kind of gaming performance we'll see here? That's an interesting question. And then the 7600X coming in at 299, matching the price of the 5600X. And while we do see, again, that it's, it is gonna be a very good gaming CPU, uh, my issue here is there's nothing really in the lower end. So let me put it this way. Uh, a price of $299 for literally less money than that on PC Part Picker, I could throw in a Ryzen 5600 with a compatible motherboard. Granted, it's a, a cheap one and this is even a, a B450. Like I could have gone more expensive, but hear me out for a second here. And 16 gigabytes of you know DDR4 3200CL16 memory. In other words, I can put together a CPU, a motherboard and RAM and by the way, this CPU will come with a CPU cooler. So if you wanted to live with the uh, you know stock cooler, which certainly does get the job done, maybe a bit noisily, um, I can come in for less than $290, meaning less than the price of just the 7600X, um, I could build the entire motherboard, RAM, CPU, and CPU cooler. And it's looking like the 7000 series, even the 7600X, will not come with stock coolers, so you're gonna have to factor in that price, as well as the fact that um, if I wanted 16 gigabytes of DDR5 memory right now, it's closer to $80. And another thing that I don't have the slide up here right now for, but AMD absolutely said in their presentation video is that the cheapest motherboards in other words, they said the motherboards will start at $125. And again, um, on their older AM4 platform, you can get some really, really inexpensive motherboards. Um, so I'm just saying that you'd be well over like, you know, 
over $500, I think, to throw together, you know, a, a CPU, CPU cooler, motherboard, and memory. Now, granted, it's all gonna perform a lot better, but the thing is, you know, a Ryzen 5 5600 is going to perform pretty well. And here's what I think a lot of people need to think about when you're thinking about buying a CPU, is that, the you know, if your video card isn't fast enough, to actually take advantage of the increased CPU performance at the graphic settings and resolutions that you're gonna be playing games at, um, then you're not actually getting this massive generation on generation uh, gaming performance jump if you are already GPU limited. Now, that does bring me to a, a, the strong point here of the 7000 series though, which is the longevity of it, um, because AMD are committing to um, up through 2025 plus for support, so you'll get several years. I'm sure you'll be able to upgrade this. Uh, you know, to other CPUs in the future. So, I mean, I'm just saying, I think people buying at the more uh, low budget end, yeah, I, I'm not sure you're gonna get a lot of this, uh, a lot out of this, at least initially. Um, but we'll see what happens. Anyway, like I said, I gotta work today. So uh, let's move on with the video. So how about Intel's competition? Well, the Intel 13th gen Raptor Lake CPUs should be announced on the 27th of September, which if you think that sounds familiar, that is the availability date <laughs> um, of uh, Ryzen's 7000 series. So that's kind of interesting that they're lining it up like that, although the actual launch will be on the 20th of October, although I will say that this is a leak, so this has the potential to be incorrect. Um, but there does uh, seem to be some sort of a screenshot of an Intel slide with those uh, with those numbers on it. So we'll we'll see what happens, but um, that does seem to be lining up with what people are generally expecting. Um, so 13th gen around the corner, and here's the thing is Intel, at least with their 12th gen, did fill in their gaming CPUs with those lower end, lower priced options, like a 12100 and a 12400. So if we see a 13100 or a 13400, or heck, even like I said, just go back and get the 1200, you know, um, it'll be interesting to see where the value gaming segment ends up, but maybe AMD's plan is to either drop price eventually once that competition shows up, or just to keep their 5000 series going as a, um, you know, a, as their lower priced uh, option, maybe something like that, we'll see. Now, it was cool that they decided to show off their Radeon RX 7000 RDNA 3 GPUs, but they really didn't give us much of anything. We got this picture. I mean, it looks neat. Uh, and then they showed them, uh, showed a game running with no real like performance metrics or anything, but it was running in 4K. Yay. Anyway, so I, I felt like Lisa Sue was looking for a bigger like reaction from the audience or something like that on this. Um, but I think the audience was wanting a bit more information to get excited about. Now, um, really all we got confirmed there about this is the greater than 50% uh, 50 performance per watt versus RDNA 2 uplift. Um, so basically at the same power draw, you should get 50% more performance although they'll probably also increase the power draw, which then gives you more than 50% more performance, although that's an efficiency curve, so it's not this, it's, anyway, it all gets complicated, but we didn't get a whole lot of information there. Um, we did hear that advanced chiplet packaging, five nanometer process node, uh, all of that, but basically it's just like, hey, this is incoming. Um, it, 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 it is currently being tested and running a game. So, yay. Now, speaking of more GPU news, back with Copite again, because, uh, yeah, can't do a GPU news video without Copite. He's saying that there are two different versions of the RTX 4070 uh, currently being tested by NVIDIA, and it's unclear which one will be the final cut at release. Uh, one of them is a 12 gigabyte chip, um, with 21 gigabit per second GDDR6X. The other one is 10 gigabytes. And then that um, if you went down to the 10 gigabyte version, you would also be losing some of your, um, you know, uh, cores and all of that. And this would be a time spy extreme if you wanna just look at how would he estimate the performance. The, of this uh, higher end 12 gigabyte model would be uh, around 11,000, although he is putting a less than, so less than 11,000. 
Whereas the um, 10 gigabyte version, he's showing a uh, less than 10,000. So there's definitely a performance difference there. And if you wanna see this all kind of wrapped up in a nice little chart, video cards has you covered. And you can see how where these, um, uh, how these two different versions would stack up. Basically 56 SMs versus 60, and 160-bit bus versus 192-bit bus, uh, which is what um, allows for the two different memory configurations to be considered. Your uh, memory bus controls, you know, how, how many uh, sticks of RAM you can fit in there and all that. Um, so anyway, we'll see how all of that plays out. It looks like NVIDIA is still testing uh, there. And like I said, I think it'll be a little while before we see the 4070. I think at the soonest would be December and we'll see if it gets uh, delayed beyond there. I haven't heard any um, release date uh, updates on any of that. And last little bit of GPU news is, hey, if you got yourself an ARC A380, it can mine Ethereum, but uh, probably shouldn't. And aren't we finally getting the proof of stake uh, Ethereum transition coming out here anyway? <laughs> all right, guys, I gotta get to work. I hope all of you have an excellent day. Ah, that's not my stop recording button. There it is.